Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel from premiumbeat.com and in this After Effects tutorial, we're gonna create a photography interface. Okay, so we're gonna be focusing on this specific uh, graphic right here, but uh, if you're on a time crunch or this isn't the uh, interface that you're going after and you need a little help, what I suggest doing is check out this template from rocketstock.com and there's a variety of different animated uh, you know, camera templates that you can easily integrate with your footage for whatever you're doing. But for those of us who want to learn and have some time, let's go ahead and let's create a new composition by clicking on our film strip icon down here. And we'll just call this one a tutorial. And we'll call this composition uh, camera UI. And I'm using 1920 by 1080 and 24 frames per second. But this is going to depend on the type of footage you're using. If you're just using images, 1920 by 1080 might be good. But if you have like 4K video, that's something you might need to think about. So let's just click OK. And here we are in a blank composition. The first thing I'm going to do is bring down my image. And you can use video. It doesn't really matter. We're just going to use images in this tutorial. But if you have video, all the same concepts will apply that we're doing in this video. And since I'm using an image that's not exactly 16 by 9, I just need to scale this up by hitting S on my keyboard. And I'll bring up the scale. And the first elements we're going to create is kind of like the autofocus points. So let's go up here and maybe just grab the rectangle tool. And if we go down to where this, we see this little crosshair here and we click on that, we can click on title action saves. And this will kind of give us an idea where the center's at. And I'm going to click here right in the center. And if I hold down shift, it'll, I'll be able to draw out a perfect uh, square. And nice and small like that should be fine. And then we need to go up to window align. And we can just use the center up uh, buttons here. So we can have this uh, square right in the middle of our composition. And we can turn off the title saves for now. And then let's go up to the top here and let's de deactivate fill just by clicking on the word fill and we just click on none. And we'll click on the word stroke and we can turn the fill on by clicking solid color. Click OK. And we we'll click off of this, you know, we see that our square is right in there. So let's make this a, a little bit bigger. We we'll just kind of click a point out here, hold down shift. And that's looking pretty good. If we hold down command on a Mac or a control on a PC, we can double click the pan behind tool at the top here. And the anchor point will be exactly centered. And let's go ahead and just line this back in the center of our comp. So now we have this anchor point in there. So that's looking pretty good. Let's go and grab the ellipse tool and make sure nothing is selected down here. And once again, we'll kind of come here, hold down shift and we'll draw out a perfect circle kind of like this. And we'll just kind of line this up right in the center. And now we kind of have our circle. We can you know, double click the pan behind tool here. Make sure to hold down command or control depending on what platform you're using. And we can come in here and maybe just scale this down. It doesn't really matter. And then of course, make sure to select it and just make this a little bit smaller. And that's looking pretty decent. We might need to increase the stroke on this just by a touch. So maybe we'll do like six. That's looking pretty good. So we'll come down to our timeline. We'll rename these layers. We'll call this one maybe circle. And we'll call this layer maybe center, you know, AF point, auto focus point. So, so let's go ahead and start creating some of these points, you know, outside of our circle there. So let's go ahead and select our square here and go up to edit, duplicate. Let's bring it to the top and let's rename this layer just to, you know, AF point. And let's keep it maybe just at one. Okay. And let's go come here, bring it to the top, and let's just drag this out. So let's go back to my original demo comp, and we see that the rectangles are kind of squished up a little bit. And for probably most of you guys have looking through a DSLR, and you'll see these autofocus points. So this is exactly what we'll be doing. So uh, just keep in mind that they're not perfect squares is my point. So let's come back in here, and instead of you know using these angles here to squish it up, let's just go right into our contents here and go to the rectangle, go in the rectangle path one, and let's break the chain here. And let's come here and just make this like a, and let's kind of squish this down by a little bit. And then we can relink the chain and then make it bigger if we have to. So this way, you know, if we would have just distorted it like this, uh, it, it definitely would have been distorted. And as you see, we zoom in here and we see that the uh, sides here are a little bit thicker than the actual width. So that's why we don't want to squish it down. And it's, oh, that's only if you're going for perfection, of course. But with this done here, let's just make sure this is kind of in the center. Just make sure this is kind of lined up like that. Beautiful. And then let's close up the rectangle one. Let's duplicate it. Let's bring it over here to the side. And let's go back into the rectangle path one. Break the link. And this one will make it a little bit, uh, I guess, longer in height. And we'll do it like that. And that's pretty decent. Make sure that rectangle one selected. And kind of put it in a nice, you know, arcing position. So it's kind of like whoop. 
Okay, beautiful. And then let's close this up. Let's duplicate it once more, bring it to the side, maybe all the way over here. You know, maybe we'll go back into the paths here and maybe we'll make this one a little bit wider and maybe a little longer if we want. All right, that should be okay. So now let's go and duplicate our autofocus point one and let's go up to uh, layer transform and let's flip horizontal and it's gonna bring it right over to this side. Now, of course, we can go into here and kind of delete the rectangle up here so we don't have duplicates. Um, now we're left with two. And then let's go here, duplicate both of these autofocus points and bring them to the top and go up to layer, transform, flip, vertical. And we're just gonna have to manually drag this down and kind of, we can match that up in the rectangles there. Okay, so now we've done our total autofocus points here. So that's looking pretty interesting. Of course, you can make these, you know, black if you want it to be exactly realistic. But I'm just, you know, I think it looks nice visually to have it look pure white like this. But let's go up here to the top and <clears throat> let's kind of, you know, bring up our title safes again. And let's kind of just outline this sort of, uh, you know, title safe line right here, this box. And if we take it off, we kind of just created this border here. And then maybe we can change the stroke to six. So now we're starting to create some framing within our comp here. Let's go ahead and rename this to inner uh, border. And then let's just duplicate the layer. And let's just go out here and scale this out a little bit. Maybe bring the title saves back on and we'll kind of have that on that outer border just like that. We may need to go into the contents and just kind of adjust this by a touch. Kind of make that perfect. Then let's go up to layer, new, solid. And then let's go up to layer, new, solid. And let's call this one darkened border. And we're just creating some nice uh, outline design here. And what we're going to do is just double click the rectangle tool. And that's going to create a mask right outside of our uh, solid here. And then we're going to go up to effect, generate, stroke. And we're going to set this to on transparent. And then we'll go ahead and change the color to black. And then we'll really increase the brush size by like a lot. And then we'll kind of do it to like right there. And then uh, we'll go ahead and lower the opacity to maybe 50%. That should be okay. And then of course, make sure the brush hardness is set to 100%. And then we are gonna have to go into this mask and just make sure your selection tool is selected. And if you hit shift, hold down shift and select this point, you'll kind of deselect it and then reselect this point and it'll be the only point that's selected. And shift click the bottom point down here and kind of bring this into the, uh, you know, side of this, you know, white border here. So we're going to kind of have this nice darkened edge all the way throughout. And, you know, we can come here and continue to do that. Okay, looking pretty good. Let's put this layer all the way at the bottom of our uh, layers here. And, you know, that looks pretty interesting. Now, this isn't perfect border. You, of course, you can always, always readjust uh, these frames, but it's okay for this tutorial, I think. So we need to go in here and just actually bring in some information. So let's go to the textile tool, maybe type out our aperture to start off. So maybe like 2.8. And then I'm also using the font, or sorry, the typeface Helvetica. Um, and that's looking pretty decent. So let's go here, bring that down there. And we'll go ahead and just duplicate this layer, bring it over to the side. Uh, we'll grab the textile tool and maybe the it's the shutter speed maybe it's one over 200 and then let's duplicate it once more and let's change this to maybe like ISO you know 400 or something and then of course what we can do here if we want to make this extra stylistic we can select the word ISO and we can come over here to superscript and we can click on that it's underneath the other character tab and you know they'll kind of be nice up and you know jumped up there and that looks pretty nice. And let's duplicate this once more and let's do like maybe color temperature. Maybe we'll just set it to like 5600, you know, Kelvin. And let's turn off superscript by just deselecting it. And there we have it. So now we're going to create this exposure meter and it's really easy to do. So let's go and grab the rectangle tool and I'm just going to draw out a thin rectangle after zooming in here. And let's just set the fill on to solid color and let's just turn the stroke off since we don't need it. And I'm just going to solo this layer so we can kind of see what we're doing and just focus on that. And I'm just going to come here to rectangle one, duplicate it, and we're just going to bring it over. And, and that should be good. Let's grab the uh, textile tool and let's type out negative three. And we'll just come here, bring it down, put it right next to our uh, two lines here. And let's go ahead and make this bigger, kind of like this bigger. And then let's go back to the title tool here. And let's set these uh, minus here to the superscript. And then we're gonna come here to the baseline shift and we can kind of bring this up a little bit. 
and that should be good for right there. And then we kind of come here, reposition this, and these are looking pretty good. So let's go and make sure the text layer and the shape layer is selected. Let's duplicate them, bring them to the top, and let's bring this over. Let's go to the textile tool, and let's come here and just set this to two. Maybe we should turn off uh, the superscript, and that should be fine. Excellent. And then we just come here, readjust this, and things looking pretty good. And once again, we'll duplicate this, bring this over, and we'll put this to one. And we might need to just readjust this a little bit if we want to keep this a little bit tidy, tighten up. All right, let's just duplicate this and bring it back up to the top. And this one's a little bit different. Let's go over to the actual text layer and let's bring it to the other side, just like this. And we'll title, we'll change the one to a two. And we'll definitely need to bring that back over. Pretty good. And this time we'll just duplicate the lines and we'll bring it over to the side. And then let's duplicate the negative three, bring that one to the top. And we'll just bring this all the way over here. And let's change the uh, minus to a positive, uh, to a plus symbol. And we'll come over here and make that superscript. And we might need to change the baseline shift just by a little bit. And that should be good. So now we need to add an arrow between here. So make sure none of your layers are selected. So let's grab the polygon tool. And let's just draw this nice... Uh, Polygon out here just like this. And what's cool about this, we go right into the polystar, go into the path, actually just select just select the uh, polygon path and right click it, and convert to Bezier path. And let's go ahead and click the top point up here and just delete it. And then what we can do is go to the transform settings here and maybe break the link for scale and just like kind of scrunch this up a little bit. So now we'll kind of have like this nice arrow, kind of like this. If you want, we can maybe drag this out by a little bit more, make it a little bit longer, bring it right back into place. And then we can kind of close up this gap. Just go ahead and select, you know, everything that is on the right side over here. And we'll bring it in just a little bit closer. So now we have our exposure bar just like this. And what we can do is maybe duplicate this layer and then go up to layer, transform, flip vertical. And we'll bring this all the way down here. And this will kind of be our uh, indicator, our hour meter. And let's just rename this layer to just meter. And that's pretty cool. And if we want, we can actually animate this. So we hit P on our keyboard for position. Uh, let's add a keyframe for that. And let's move that keyframe forward in time. And let's drag this to the left to where it's going to be like on negative one. And, you know, that should be pretty cool. Maybe we're going to bring this keyframe in just by a touch. So it's kind of actually sitting on one. So maybe we'll change our exposure on, or something like that. And let's close this up and select all of our uh, layers here. And let's go up to layer pre-compose and we can call this one exposure meter great and then let's go ahead and unsolo this layer so now we probably need to scale this down and we can put that like right here in the center okay so I went ahead and just positioned my elements if we need to bring this inner border in by a little bit let's go ahead and just select this and bring this in by a little bit That way we can kind of see our exposure bar a little bit more in our information. Maybe we just drag this down by a little bit more. So maybe we, what we want to do is when we're at the uh, one here for our metering, maybe we want, we want to set the ISO to 200. So what we can do is go into the text here, add a keyframe for source text. Let's bring that keyframe forward by one frame and let's set this down to 200 ISO. And this way um, kind of wants to it just turns to 400 ISO and this will kind of go right to the actual, you know, balanced exposure. And that makes perfect sense. Uh, and if you're, you know, into photography, this would have been like a one stop change from two uh, from 200 ISO to 400 ISO. That would have been completely one stop. So that makes completely sense to go to right to the center there. So pretty interesting. So let's go ahead and create a battery. Let's grab the rectangle tool and just draw out at rectangle like this. And maybe we can close this up by a little bit. All right, and then let's turn off the fill and let's enable the stroke, make it a solid color. We'll do white, maybe we'll just keep it at uh, six pixels for the stroke size, bring this in. And then let's grab the rectangle tool once more and we'll do it all under the same layer. And we'll zoom in here and let's just draw out like a kind of rectangle like this. Sorry, it's a little pixelated there. And let's set the fill back on and let's turn the stroke off. And that's pretty cool. We can, of course, 
you know, resize this depending on how big you want it to be. And that's pretty cool. Let's go to add and let's add a repeater. Make sure the rectangle two was selected and let's go here and let's set the number of copies to like four. And then let's go in the transform repeater and let's bring down the position, the X position to be exact. And we'll kind of drag this out all the way to the end there. Maybe we'll do like 53. All right, so now we kind of have our battery life in there. And then make sure the shape layer is selected again and we'll draw out like uh, the tip of the battery kind of like that. So pretty cool. Now we have the battery in there. And now we have, you know, most of our basic UI elements in here. Of course, you can go really crazy with this and make it very detailed. Um, and, you know, everything might be different depending on what you're doing. But let's start animating this a little bit. Like, let's actually animate this photo a little bit, make it like a little bit realistic before we actually, you know, take a photo. So what we can do is hit P on our keyboard and hold down shift and hit R on our keyboard. And let's alt click the stopwatch for a position. And let's type in wiggle, open parenthesis. 0.5 comma 30 close parenthesis and I'll just zoom in here real fast so you guys can kind of see what I typed out there wiggle open parenthesis 0.5 comma 30 close parenthesis all right and then we'll also alt click the stopwatch for rotation type in the same thing once more uh, maybe do yeah 1.5 comma 5 close parenthesis so instead of 30 I'll just do 5 and this time we scrub through here let me just solo this layer so it's not we'll kind of have like a little bit of animation here and that's pretty interesting let's make this layer a 3d layer so we'll kind of be zooming in and out as well you might need to scale up your image but if you're doing a 1920 by 1080 uh you know sequence you might have like a 4k image so it should be no big deal to kind of scale into your footage a little bit so let's keep that in mind but now we kind of have that nice you know animation there and then let's go make sure the layer is selected go up to effect blur gaussian blur and we'll kind of do some like out of focus stuff. So we'll add a keyframe, you know, actually let's increase the blurness just by a little bit, maybe go to like 16 or something, depending on how blurry you want it to be. Let's add a keyframe for that. Uh, let's set you on our keyboard to bring up the keyframes, bring that back in time, maybe by a touch, move forward here. Maybe we'll set this down to zero. So, you know, we'll be deeply out of focus and then it'll slightly, you know, it'll gradually go into focus. And then, you know, sometimes, you know, you don't get the focus right all the time. So maybe we can pop it out of focus really quickly, maybe do it to 10 and then, you know, bring it down to zero once again. And maybe we can make these last keyframes, you know, easy as keyframes by hitting F9 on our keyboard. Actually, we'll make all of them easy as keyframes. That'd be good. So let's say we want to like actually animate one of these autofocus points, maybe just the center one uh, to save some time. So let's go ahead and open up the center autofocus point layer and let's go to the rectangle there. Let's go into the actual stroke. And let's also take a look at our keyframes down here at our picture. And it goes in the focus right here. So we might want this to fire up and be red. So let's add a keyframe for the color for our stroke. And let me just zoom in here. Bring that keyframe back, you know, maybe about two frames. And let's set this color right to red. So now, as you can see, you know, it turns into red because, you know, this it has its focus. And then maybe we can go f uh, forward by a couple more frames, set it to white. And then let's just go here, copy these keyframes, move forward in time, maybe go to the last keyframe here and paste those keyframes right back in there. Maybe we'll just set the red right on top of our uh, clearly uh, focused point there. So now we kind of have it firing up and you know, that's how you can go ahead and animate these uh, autofocus points to be a little bit realistic. So let's say we actually want to show the uh, camera animating and taking a picture. What we can do is create a new solid and we can call this one shutter. And then let's go up to effect transition and let's add the iris wipe effect. And let's say we want this to come on like right here at three seconds. Let's increase the iris points all the way to 32. And let's add a keyframe for the outer radius. And let's hit you on our keyboard to bring up the keyframes. Let's bring the keyframe forward by a couple of frames. And let's just really increase the outer radius. And as you can see, we kind of almost have like those nice aperture blades in there, uh, which I think is really awesome. And just, but we'll just kind of animate this all the way out and we'll make the last keyframe here easy as by hitting F9 on our, key, on our keyboard. So now it'll boom, close just like that. And then maybe what we'll do is we'll go back to our project and re-drag in our image here. And we'll just bring it to the front here and we can kind of come here and just scale this up. So then, you know, we'll be looking through the actual viewfinder and then shutter will click and then boom, there's our final picture. So that's pretty interesting.
And of course, maybe you can do the Ken Burns effect or something. And if you really want what I was just doing, if you had the final images in here, maybe you can make this image just a little bit more, you know, you know uh, more raw. So maybe we go to color correction, brightness and contrast. We can bring down the contrast by a little bit. And then also go to effect, color correction, hue and saturation. And we can bring the saturation down as well. So we kind of have like the raw image here, kind of like before we take the photo. And we, all, we have that animation and then boom, we take our picture and there's our final image. So I think that's really awesome. So there's a ton of different interfaces that you can build and you can make this extremely detailed. Uh, but after a quick render, this is what you should have gotten if you followed along with this tutorial. And you know, it looks really awesome. There should be a ton of uses for this. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. For more tutorials, please be sure to check out our blog at premiumbeat.com. And if you're in the need for royalty free music, we have a huge library full of great music for your projects. So if you have the time, I invite you to check us out at premiumbeat.com. And once again, thank you for watching this video. And this has been Joshua Noel from premiumbeat.com.